um, abortion. It's a very loaded term for a lot of political reasons. But you actually use different terminology. Uh -huh. um, you call it pregnancy release. And that actually is more of a term that encapsulates uh, miscarriage, um, actually giving birth to a baby, um, abortion, um, and all these things may be in between, whatever they may be. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'll ask this question, which is, you chose that term for a good reason. I want to ask what that reason is. Mm -hmm. And the second thing I would ask is, when it comes to these subjects surrounding um, pregnancy release, I mean, um, how important is it to you to convey like that we need to have more of a positive and self-affirming, life-affirming attitude about these things, which have this dreary aspect to it for some reason. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's a good question, but that's kind of what's coming up right now. Sure. Well, speaking to the term pregnancy release, um, it's meant to normalize and unify these experiences of having a pregnancy and then releasing it. Um, because there are a lot of extremely important commonalities that are very infrequently honored or acknowledged or known about. So regardless of how a pregnancy ends, there is extreme alchemy, again, on these hyper dimensions, mm -hmm. um, on a cellular level, we're never the same once we've been pregnant, mm -hmm. our cells are, are changed for life, um, and there is an intrapartum, a pregnant period, a birthing experience mm -hmm. of some sort, mm -hmm. a release of some sort. And then there is a postpartum period um, where our physical bodies as well as our emotional and psycho-spiritual bodies are more vulnerable and um, deserve care. <laughs> Right. Deserve to be honored and cared for and nurtured by our relationships in our interpersonal intimate lives as well as our community cultural lives. Um, so normalizing is, is huge. Getting really clear and honest about the fact that only about half of conceptions, known conceptions, medically, clinically, statistically speaking, whatever the fuck statistics really are, um, <laughs> only about half of pregnancies end as a baby. Right. Really? <laughs> about half of them end in miscarriage or abortion. And actually, on a clinical, technical terminology level, all miscarriages are abortions. When you look at the codes that are written up by medical care providers, every single type of a miscarriage is clinically an abortion. And because of the, this is because on a physical level, our, our anatomy does not have a preference or an attachment to the reason that we are releasing a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. It could be a biochemical genetic issue that causes a, a miscarriage, or it can be an emotional, psychological reality where somebody makes a choice. Mm -hmm. And the tools and the methods by which this pregnancy is expelled um, vary by individual, but the reality that there was a pregnancy, a birth, and a postpartum period remains the same across experiences. And our ability to carry pregnancies and release them, similarly to our ability to ovulate and menstruate, is something that it's not just the obligation, mm -hmm. um, but it's the honor of our community to tend to people who are actively bleeding and people who are able to carry and give life in the way that our bodies do. Yeah. So that's, that's an aspect of an intact, healthy culture right. is that it respects the womb mm -hmm. in all of its processes because it's where we all originated. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of so course. You, like, well, isn't that the thing though? That's, I mentioned Federici in that, um, the witch hunts, but this idea of transforming the body into like a factory or something industrial or something that serves men mm -hmm. and serves the society, whatever that is, mm -hmm. the Leviathan, I guess. Um, it's like women, like it's like the, the, the womb does not become the center of the community it becomes this like asset for, for profit or something sure. for control for domination 
so it it seems like it's such a common sense thing you're saying. It's just like it feels so deeply true to me, at least. Mm-hmm. And I think many people will listen will feel that as well, like making the womb, because that's where life comes from. Yeah, it's like, why are we, like, there's, okay, there's so many different philosophies around religion and theology and myth. Right, right. <laughs> right? And uh-huh. like our creation myth and our origin stories. And these are really potent and beautiful stories. And that's... Uh, another podcast, right, about Mm, (laughs) our collective unconscious and mythology. Mm -hmm. But this is um, the approach that I have to educating people about the menstrual cycle, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that this is the origin story. Mm, Right, yeah. (laughs) Like, stop with all of the insane questioning and all of the oppressive... Uh, dogma and all of these other things of like, where do we come from? I mean, like, hey, you guys, we we come from uteruses. <laughs> <laughs> let's just stop there. That's maybe good. let's respect them. Yeah, no, I maybe get let's that. learn about them. Maybe they have something to teach us. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. So let me ask. This is just a. It's purely just out of curiosity because. Great. That's a great place to come from. <laughs> <laughs> but you talk about postpartum, and of course, something that comes up is like postpartum depression. <sighs> What? I know that's a big subject, but uh-huh. I'm like, but I get worried because I wonder, mm-hmm. like, what is that coming from? Is it something similar mm-hmm. to what I mentioned with menstruation and Absolutely. the pain of menstruation? It's like the the conditions. There's a lot of um, intersecting isolation, things. isolation, and lack of oxytocin, mm-hmm. and poor nutrition. Um, there's so so many many factors things okay. that are contributing to that. Um, okay, but those are pretty good actually. Like, off the cuff, isolation lack of nutrition and what was the other one i forget but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> everybody when they're actively bleeding which is menstruating or postpartum period um some hot tips <laughs> hot <laughs> tips from traditional cultures <laughs> right it's like bleeding people need to have extra rest yeah extra warmth and extra nutrition that is really high in minerals so that we don't become anemic. And if you're not doing those things when you're actively bleeding, it's going to hurt. Right. Uh, yeah. And the longer that you go without doing those things, the more it's going to hurt. So, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of nuance there. But I would say that isolation would be even bigger than the like the physical realities the social animal part of us mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that is so core to our birthing experience and our mothering yeah is we're social creatures we are not meant to be alone right <laughs> during those times and we are certainly not meant to be away from the baby for the amount of time that most people are in our culture yeah so 40 days is the most basic universal postpartum period in most traditional and indigenous cultures. Okay. And during those 40 days, you have extremely restricted activities and you eat special foods and you're honored in a very special way. You're like lucid, right? Right, yeah. You're porous to the spirit. Well, it's like they just move through you. Yeah, you have, I mean, that's a huge transitionary period in a person's life. That's like, yeah. that's supposed to be acknowledged and respected by those around you Mm -hmm. right and and again in our culture it's very isolating it doesn't seem like that's respected or understood at all even by your partner who's supposed to be there by your side and respect that and they're Mm. like why are you going back to work yet or why are you doing this and this and there's all of these pressures on families and and partnerships today anyway but it's really disheartening to see that when i see that 